sludge everywhere. Not a big deal. Well, it's a new day. Now I'm gonna go and take a look and see what kind of damage the hail did to the other crops. We know the little bit of winter wheat got hit kind of in the area we were at. Uh, so that's too bad, but let's take a look at this barley. See if we see any hangers. See if we see any evidence of shattering. And then we'll know. So hangers are if the stem gets whacked, the head will fall down, but it'll still be attached. It doesn't quite slice it off. And I see a couple, couple leaves here and there that are bent over like that one. But I'm not seeing any really bad hangers. Anything in here that shows that, oh, there's a couple right there. So that's still harvestable. I mean, that head can still be recovered by the combine. It's not on the ground, it's hanging down. It's mostly mature, so there should be able to fresh out. I do see some hangers in here. So this got dinged a little bit. You know, if you were to figure it out, 30% maybe, 20% of the heads that are there are hanging, maybe damaged, but they're still recoverable by the combine. That's not insured, so um, <laughs> we won't be able to collect anything on it anyways. If we did have insurance, you'd probably be able to collect a little bit on it. I don't think it'd pay back the premium, but it would at least give you some room. So let's go to the next piece. See if we can figure out more of the damage. Where'd it go? Change of plans real quick. Got the International, the Eagle, we call it the 9370, and brought it out to the field. I'm on the road because, well, I should say the field's still muddy. I no way I'm getting that truck in and out of this field. And the one that's in the field, the Peterbilt, is loaded full and it's muddy. That's not coming out either. But I'd like to get the grain out of those combine hoppers. We couldn't fold them in because there was grain in there. And that just logistically, we didn't have another truck on site on time to dump and do real quick to close the top or top. So the green in these combines is very wet. So if we get it in the truck, I can get the truck to the bin, get it on the aeration, get the air blowing on it, dry that grain down, as well as get these combines dried down. So then I'm gonna change oil on that gearbox. I'm pretty sure the seal's out on this one and it likes to get water in it. So I'd like to get the water out of there, put fresh oil in it back in and do it again. Hey, we're actually gonna use the flotation wheels today for once on the farm. Yep, float through that mud. All right, tricky part. Let's see if I can get this auger tall enough to clear the truck, because it's up on a county road and I've got to get into a ditch and I don't know if I'm gonna get close enough, so it might be tricky. Let's see if we can do it. Oh yeah, we made it. I emptied the hopper too. There was a little bit of really wet green in the bottom of that hopper. I dumped it on the ground. I probably should have just kept it in it, but whatever. So get this thing unloaded. I am plumb full and then I'll grab the other one and get that one unloaded too. It'd be good to get this done. Mud? Yeah. It's been a while. Good to see you. All right, all done here. We probably won't be back in the field till tomorrow. Maybe at the earliest tonight. It takes a little bit for that crop to shed some of the moisture just picked up. Our neighbor just said he's down here. He just picked up a 8240, so he's pretty excited about that upgrade from a 7088. That's a big upgrade and he's, he's loving life. But the field he was in, he got annihilated. Same path as this storm and just took his spring wheat out bad. So actually, I think it might have been his winter wheat. But with all that said, um, we got to do a little more looking at our stuff. But the hardest part is, is still, we still got to harvest these fields. They got hailed, but we still got to run the combines through them. So it's going to be a rough, rough harvest for the rest of the season. I don't know. We'll see. Look at some crops again. So the other day it's been just an absolute nightmare to try to get the hydraulics tractor to run the, 
the Gulf 2 conveyor for the auger. And Langer Arms has tried just about everything you can think of. And we've just come to the conclusion that the pump on this old 7140 Magnum hydraulic pump is getting weak. So we got one on order. It'll be here in a couple days. Uh, but for the time being, we got the skids to here to use its hydraulics to run the conveyor. So we'll just have to have two people on low trucks. Because one's got to sit in the skid steer while one's handling the gates on the trucks. But at least that'll get us by until we get the new pump to get the Magnum going again. And then hopefully we'll have a screaming conveyor when we get it all fixed. All right, this some of our earlier seeded spring wheat. Oh. Just looking for hail damage, hail damage, hail damage. <laughs> oh, this is not gonna be fun to harvest. This crop is 10 bushel maybe, 15. Not seeing a lot of hangers or green on the ground or shattered heads. There's a lot of these kind of heads where they just uh, didn't grow. But I think the hail didn't hit up here. So this is probably the farthest north that that hail went. So that's good to know because we've got a decent amount of crops that way still. That already got hailed, but didn't need to get another round of hail. So let's move on, let's go to the south. Let's see how far south the storm went. All right, so that's about a mile south. And oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it got annihilated. That's 80%, 70, 80%. Okay, we had some nice looking barley for the year and it's right over there and I'm sure it got toasted too, but let's go take a look at it. I'm literally driving the lion of the hail right now. That side, there's crop there standing. This side is thin and about 90%. I can see it stripped a little bit over here, but it split this field in half and there's little patches I can tell where a little streams of hail, little veins of hail came down and nailed it. Amazing how you can see it. Visualization is very apparent. Oh boy. Oh yeah, it just annihilated it. This barley is toast. Oh, it mulched it. There's, there's mm, not even a bushel an acre here. Oh, this is looking good too. So I guess the question is, how far south did it go? Still hailed here. It looks like it's a lot better. Oh, it just, it thrashed that barley. Absolutely thrashed it. Man. The spring wheat over here is pretty beat up. I'm right on the edge of the barley and spring wheat field and those heads are all cut in half. They went through that too. So I'm two miles south and it nailed this too. Not as bad, but it hit it too. There's 30% on the ground. That's a chop. But at least it went at least a good mile and a half, two miles. Oh, I gotta pick up some here. This is all the land that wasn't hailed from the first two or three storms we've had this year. Out of the whole circle of our farm, North half got hit, kind of more in the middle. Now all the south half got hit. I can see it out there. It's it's damaged. They're 50 percent on the ground. How far south is the question? We'll find out here in a second. So it doesn't look as bad down here. So this is about three miles south, and I don't see a lot of evidence of hail here. So this is probably the edge of the bottom end, which is almost the end of our farm. So. We got most of it. Uh, all right, well, I, I don't know. I think that's enough of looking for Halo today. I, I need to go do something else, get my mind off this. Back in the saddle. So we, uh, we're gonna go over and try this winter wheat over here. We reparked the equipment. And I think, I think it's ready. I checked it. Let's we'll see if the moisture comes in on the combine, but I think it's, it's very, very cuttable. With those West Steel bins, they got quite a nice aeration floor on them. We can put 15 moisture wheat on top. It'll dry it right down, no problem. So we might as well get going. If it's ready, let's go. And then, depending on how much is laying over from the hail and possibly soft flies or a little fly that burrows in the stem in it, 
lays the weed over. We might have to put what's called crop lifters on the front of our header. I don't like running them, but they do save us crop and they pay for themselves. So they're just basically little metal arms that hang off the front of your header and they drag the ground. And then as they scrape the ground, any straw that's laying over with the head on it, they lift up and then it goes to the header. So we'll see if we need those. I'll know shortly here, but um, yeah, options. At least we got options. Well, let's get to harvesting again. Get some of this crop off the field. Yeah, I think we might want to throw those crop lifters on. There's a lot on the ground, I'm not getting. Well, I'm sitting here. This is uh, some of that winter wheat that got hailed about three weeks ago, something like that. And as you can see, top's busted off that one. That one's cut in half. There's a whole bunch on the ground. That's one reason why I run those crop lifters is to hopefully catch a lot of that. I think we are. It's hard to say. I mean, you can just see how much is on the ground there that we're not getting. But I, there's nothing you can do about that. But it is running about 15 to 20 bushel here. So, I mean, that's pleasantly surprising, which goes to show it would have been about 30 probably if it didn't get hailed. So it probably lost a good 30, 40% of its yield at least. But I mean, still, that's, that's bushels going in the bin. So we'll take it, we'll take it. And we're bailing. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you can see right there, there's a lot of green. I was doing okay over on that side, but this side they got hailed previously. Hail can slow down the maturing of a plant. It stresses it, it just doesn't grow like it normally would, and well, it's still green. So we're too high of moisture here, we gotta get out of here. So we're gonna jump across the road, jump some other stuff that I think is better. But this has gotta have four or five days of solid 90 degrees to get it ready. It's not there yet. And it was running a little less than I was hoping. I actually jumped out about that 10, 12 bushel, but um, Dad was down at the other end, he said it was picking back up. So we'll find out as we get there. Let's keep on going. Well, we cut around for a little while longer, and I think we're out of acres. It's just not quite ready yet. Uh, so we're gonna bring the combines back to the yard. I'm almost out of fuel. So we might as well take back, fill them up, wash them off, do a little bit of repairs here and there, just make sure they're ready to go and come back in a couple days and continue where we left off. A little bit here, a little bit there. Sometimes ours is just straight through. Other times it's just hit and miss. Never know, that's why harvest is fun. It's always different every year, every year. So, and I don't know how much longer I'm gonna keep this too. You get that feeling that you're not alone, being watched? I kinda got that. I don't know what it is, but for some reason. Oh, hey. It's you again. Hey, buddy. Okay. I'm going to sneak up on that buck and see how close I can get. I haven't bow hunted in a while, but you guys are coming with me, so. Shh. I'm going to. I got the old John Deere box drill between him and me, and I'm going to get up to that and sneak around. We're going to see if I can get right up to him. There's a lot of noise here, so hopefully he won't hear me.
Just wanted to say hi. Come on, buddy. Can we be friends? He is a narrow buck. Look at that. Got height. But he would not score very well. you can see uh, it wasn't sprayed because when due to some circumstances when we were going to get back on it um, it got out of stage quickly um, it, you know it looked really dry everything looks like it was uh, it was pretty much the end and uh, and so we we decided to hold off instead of digging it more because um, it uh, you know, it's just, uh, it, it's really a tough year to farm when when you really don't have moisture. It's a lot easier to farm when you got moisture. Everything works well. Uh, your system is working um, as far as the sprays work better, uh, the germination's better, the crop's more vigorous, um, it chokes out the weeds, uh, it gets a better height, it's easy to cut. And then, of course, the ultimate reason why we do this is we've got to get income for the next year uh, so we can repeat that cycle. Uh, Kobe, what do you think? Yeah, I didn't have my camera ready and uh, Rabbit jumped up a while back. And, of course, he got real excited. Did you get excited about a rabbit? Huh? Did you see a rabbit? Yeah, he chased it, and it's about 90 probably 90 91 out there so he drank one of my bottles of water so anyway i thought i'd just give you an update uh we'll we'll uh, get some bushels put it in the bin dry it down and then uh, eventually we'll call it good on this harvest well i jumped across to the more hail ground it's also a very very weedy mess you can see out here a lot of kosher growing fireweed and we're grinding through it but my moisture is just high and i really want to see how close it is to what my monitor's saying it doesn't look like there's a lot of green wheat it could just be all the green kosher in there but i don't want to get too much of that in the green bin even though we've got air on it so let's go do a moisture test we'll find out what it is there's definitely some green stuff in here. I don't think this is ready. I can just tell by looking at it. So we'll know here in a second. Oh, I can feel it. That's wet. Oh yeah. Green berries. Let's see here. And the result is... It's got to be 18 above limit okay yep i'll radio dad let's try a different field this needs to sit it isn't ready yet yeah i just did a moisture test and it's not even reading it it's so high yeah what's it running it's got to be high teens low 20s yeah it's uh it's got about the one to the east either 
Yeah, it's this is just it just needs some more time. I guess we're gonna have to go to Levix. Yeah, okay, well um we're we we'll probably get enough to put the back in and that truck will be a, close to being full. Or at least some and then you can guesstimate it and we can move over there. Okay. And then uh, we can swing around and take a look at that uh, upper June. That doesn't have as many weeds and uh, it was uh, less hail, so maybe it's thicker and it was thicker. Okay. Yeah, that's an option. So, I, uh, we jumped across the road, we're in this field, and this is where the hail hit just the other day. The north end, about a half mile, 15 bushel an acre, got hailed, not 100%. The south end over here, zero, there's nothing there. It's just completely gone. And I'm right in the middle, I'm getting about six, so we're just kind of going back and forth, high speed. I get down to the point where I just don't even see any bushels coming in, I just flip around and go back and leave it. We got an adjuster coming in a couple days. This is insured, so we'll collect some on this, so that'll be good. But yeah, it's uh, it's amazing how the weather, you can see exactly where the hail hit hard and where it did night and day. Just stripped it down, and there it is. There's crop stand, pretty pretty amazing. So, Dad had to take off, he had a meeting, so leg arm's gonna take over for the combine, so we're gonna go pick him up. As you guys probably have noticed by now, we don't have Wiggles, the Wiggly Wankster Snake Tamer, Brad. He is not here for the harvest. He's got some things he's doing and two, our truck sits so long waiting to be filled that we don't need a truck driver. Three of us can do this whole harvest ourselves. So three guys are gonna knock out 7,500 acres. Normal year would not happen. We'd have two more guys for sure. This year, we can do a three. I got the short straw. 